British comedy has left its mark on the world with some of the most influential programming that has changed the way we think about comedy. Monty Python, Red Dwarf, The Office, Only Fools and Horses, Blackadder, the list goes on. And then along came Spider. Little Britain was a comedy sketch show from the BBC, consisting of leading duo Matt Lucas and David Williams. They portrayed numerous wacky and over-the-top characters in unflattering outfits, women's clothing, and spamming the same catchphrases every episode. New, but, yeah, but, new, but, yeah, but. The only gay in the balloon? Yeah, I know. But, but I'm a lady. I, I don't have a test to clay. <laughs> so how can this be adapted into a video game? When something popular comes around, you know there's some lazy fucks who want to cash in. The game was released two years after the final episode aired. Because balls to release in the game whilst the show was still on, that would be crazy talk. It was developed by Revolution Software Studios and published by a company called Blast Entertainment. You know you're in for a treat when the publisher doesn't have a Wikipedia entry. The game is a collection of seven mini games, each one based on a beloved character from the show. But the box says there's eight hilarious action packed games. And play as your favourite famous characters in 3D. Sue! First up is Vicky Pollard. Oh, Jesus, I didn't think Matt Lucas in a training bra and pants could look any more unappealing. But they did it. Congratulations! The aim here is to earn points by picking up CDs. Controlling Vicky feels like stirring coal. She's placed on a fixed trek and there's a one second delay between inputs, making it easy to crash into oncoming obstacles. Followed up by repetitive one-liners from Vicky airing her displeasure. Are you giving me evas? You're only doing this as a Jew. Ha! If you collect enough CDs without falling on your irritating ass, your meter will reach full capacity. <laughs> now you can perform this for more points. Tony Hawk, eat your heart out. Finally reach the finish line. Lap two. Did, did the level just loop? Yeah, there's the cones I knocked over at the beginning. Is this world just one straight path in a park with some Groundhog Day magic portal bullshit at the end of it? Andy and Lou now, and they're off to the local swimming pool where you must perform dives with Andy and earn points whilst Lou is preoccupied. To make Andy move, you have to repeatedly mash the X button. This is not a prime example when button mashing can be used as an effective game mechanic. Track and field? That makes sense. Interactive cutscenes and action games with a sense of urgency? I can get behind that. Walking to a diving board? Nope. I'm forced to partake in this. Holding X does nothing and slowly tapping X makes Andy move at snail's pace. <laughs> what an exceptional dive that was. It's nines across the board. Point nines that is. I mean, what even is this? Get a load of the quality of those sound effects. I wonder what length the audio guy went to record those. You can fix this in post, yeah? All right, cheers, pal. Have you showered? This is boring, I wanna go home. Impressive, a game that reviews itself. Now there's a first. Time to check in with head of Fat Fighters, Marjorie Dawes. Here, Marjorie has to collect all the biscuits in the supermarket whilst avoiding members of her Fat Fighters club. It's Pac-Man, it's unashamedly Pac-Man. It, it's not even trying to be anything else other than Pac-Man. Except Uglier has a hard time understanding simple button inputs and has a camera that just could do just backing up a little bit. Where are the enemies? How many are there? I've missed some biscuits, so where do I go? I tell you, it's potluck as the enemies could pop up at any time. Who on earth eats biscuits like that? Oh dear, you've just lost a life. And you fat. Oh, your lives are represented by grey squares. 
how fitting, because when I play this game, that's what my life feels like. A grey square. How do you fuck up Pac-Man this badly? Next stop on our tour of Old Blighty is... Slut. <laughs> Hilarious! Here aside frog enthusiast Letty. Her home is being overrun with frogs and you must protect her frog ornaments at all costs. She likes frogs, <laughs> but, but not really. Ever play whack-a-mole whilst you're drunk? You'd still have faster reactions than this game as the input lag makes another unwelcome appearance. You go for a swing, but by the time Letty actually goes in for the kill, the frog has moved and you end up smashing an ornament. Okay, killed all the frogs. I haven't killed any? Then what was that bullshit about? Oh, I see, you've got to flatten the bastards. Thanks for making things clear, game designers. Maybe if I keep hitting them, I'll get more points. Oh my... Moving along, unconvincing transvestite Emily Howard is game for a game of the beautiful game. But what Emily gets instead is what the developers imagine football is like, having never kicked a ball about in their entire lives. It's like playing Sabutio by yourself, but shitty and not fun. The kiddies barely move from their positions, apart from purposefully following the direction you're aiming in. They come across as table football players whose heart just isn't in the game anymore. This arrow, by the way, might as well not even be there. If it's not buried in the grass or pointed to the heavens, there's no real way to determine where your shot's gonna go. You're better off just booting it and hoping for the best. Good save! Yes, sir! <laughs> Bless you, sir. Oh, no, no. I know, I'm gutted I have to try this again too. Yes, sir! Nice, kid took the ball to the face like a champ. Awesome! Thousand points for a nutshot. That's the first thing this game's done right all day. Ah, crap. Only a few seconds left to score the winning goal. Have it! Still not having fun? But come on people, let's think positive here. I guarantee that this next game will inject that well-needed dose of innovation and excitement that this game so desperately needs. Oh, never mind, it's back to ripping off classic 80s games. The character we play as is Maggie, the fair attending 70-year-old bigot. Yay. The aim here is to line up the food she scoffs down in rows of three to fill up the meter before the timer runs out. Jam. Look at that, three whole jars of jam. Oh, Maggie must have a gag reflex like an anaconda. Forget Tetris, this is Diabetris. Bonus points for not needing to get your foot amputated. Okay, the timer's reached zero. Now what? <laughs> Plays as good as it looks. Sickeningly terrible. Don't think I've forgotten about you, father. You got lucky this time, kiddo. The final stop on our journey is with the only gay in the village, Duffet. You know, I just had the strangest feeling of deja. Fuck you! This game has officially reached rock bottom. It's gone from ripping off two of the most iconic video games of all time to ripping itself off. It's almost exactly the same as the first game with Vicky Pollard. Picking up items for points? Check. Straight and true looping level? Check. You're probably just a little bit poor, dude. Welcome to Gay Bashing the Video Game. If you run down the blatantly obvious camp pedestrians, you earn more points along with picking up copies of the Gay Times. Let me reiterate that. You are literally encouraged to run over gay people for being gay. Commit a hate crime, get a reward.
Who in their right mind thought this was acceptable to put in a game that was being aimed at 12 year olds? You're not limited to mere hit and runs either. Dovic can assault passers by with a stiff clothesline that makes an impact noise whether you hit anyone or not. At this point, the game's just like, yeah, fuck it, here's some noises for pressing some shit, I don't know. Watch my bottom. Ow! I guess the cyclists' cars and roadworks are straight, as I fall off my bike every time I crash into them. Ow! 100% Hedra Roll m m m m I have a little confession to make. When the show first came about, I liked it. This was mainly because I was 15 and an idiot, along with every other teenager in 2005. It threw so many catchphrases and silly voices at our undeveloped moron minds that we failed to see that the show was built upon negative stereotypes. At the time, it seemed groundbreaking and hilarious, but now it's just dated and cringeworthy that we even thought it was funny in the first place. The show really hasn't aged well. But this game was diagnosed with Werner Syndrome whilst in development. Horrid graphics, progress hindering controls, unoriginal and boring gameplay, a repetitively tedious soundtrack, and a severe lack of content that makes the game far from worth the 30 or 40 quid it would have retailed for on its release. There is a challenge mode setting harder goals for each game, but what's the incentive to play them? To unlock clips from the show. <sighs> but that's it. There goes my need to wake up every morning. Thanks for watching the first ever episode of Oh Marmalade. I had a lot of fun making it and I'm working on more episodes to be released in the near future, so stay tuned. I had help from a talented bunch of people, including Michael Lee Graham, who created my animated avatar for me. He also produced this awesome Superman animation. I recommend you check it out. Till next time guys.